What's up YouTube, it's the mod 66 back again with another Destiny 2 news video. If you're new to the channel please don't forget to finger bang that subscribe button and maybe ring the bell to keep up to date with all my new Destiny 2 news, guides and glitches videos. That being said, today we have got some spoilers. So if you don't like spoilers, this is regarding the Solstice of Heroes event that's coming up. If you don't want any spoilers, then as always this is your chance to quit out. But as from here on in, we will get straight into it. A redditor by the name of JP Deathblade uh, this morning as of the 23rd of July posted a pretty lengthy reddit post I will leave it linked down below so big shout out to Deathblade for posting this but he has been able to data mine all of the specifics about Solstice of Heroes. There's a few bits in it as well about Solo Week but we'll just quickly gloss over that. So to start the quest you'll find Eva Levante in the tower. Usual spot next to Icora and she will give you the drained armor set. So we'll go through all these uh, steps of receiving the armor set. As you can see it says here, Eva is glad to see you, she congratulates your contributions to the defense of the city and tells you that this year's solstice is special. Icora along with a small group of warlocks have come up with an unusual surprise but she's not spilling the secret. You'll have to see for yourself. As you finish your exploration of the aerial zone, Ghost receives a message from Eva herself She'd like to speak to you at your earliest convenience. Isn't it a marvellous idea? Ava exclaims as you approach. An island in the sky. My goodness. When I was a little girl I read stories about such things but you guardians can actually make them real. This will take you to the European aerial zone to run through the event for your first time. So we'll skip through all this part. This is just... Yeah. Return to Ava. She'll reward you with the drained arm set and ask you to meditate. After doing this she suggests that you take the drained armor set she's given you and meditate with it at the statue of heroes in the tower courtyard. Now meditating at the statue has infused your new armor with light, but its connection to the traveler could be made stronger. You tell her about your meditation and she nods. All that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So to upgrading the armor, each armor set has a slew of objectives that you need to complete in order to upgrade the armor set. I've listed them below. Here are the quest steps. Now, it doesn't seem too hard. He's just armor objectives and it's gonna be kill so many things generate so many orbs of light simple stuff like that then you're down onto your next step finding your voice there's a few quests that involve our guardians talking or at least there's text that says we will talk which is always good I bet the voice actors for the actual guardians for destiny are absolutely pissing themselves with laughter with how much they'll have been paid and they've only ever said like five lines of dialogue. So we get through all this. If you want to read any of this, then you can just pause the video and read it. Then we get down to empowerment. Defeat enemies with a super or elemental weapon attack to create elemental orbs. Collecting elemental orbs that match the element of the day grants your empowerment. Now this is where it gets into the European aerial zone, which I'm really confused about. Whether it's going to be a PvE area or a social space or maybe a mixture of both. It says here the Vanguard is dispatching guardians to the EAZ for combat drills and meditation. Join them. We got our first glimpse at the EAZ in the Season of Opulence trailer. I will also leave that linked down below if you want to take a look. Posted May 28, 2019. In the trailer at around 20 seconds we can see five guardians fighting Cabal in the new area. This seems like the activity will be a six player match made event. The EAZ is made up of seven different zones. Meditation grounds, ruin, tower, factory, mall, garage and courtyard. Each day a different energy will fill the air and allow you to become empowered. So each day the um, it's going to have uh, elemental burn or singe. And if you run subclasses to match the, um, the singe for that day, you'll generate the orbs to become empowered in some way. I don't know what this empowerment significance is, but we have still yet to see. I'm skipping through a lot of this just to find the important parts. If you want to um, want to read the full post, like I said, it will be linked down below. There's a full list of enemy names that you can view as well on the post. And then there is a full list of everything that you have to do with the drained armor set to get it empowered up to the next level, which leads up to the renewed armor set. Obviously getting slightly harder with every step. 
As for the first one, it's a complete run through the European aerial zone, land precision final blows and defeat hive combatants and stuff like that. Then you get down to the renewed armor set, where it's uh, complete gambit matches, collect elemental orbs using a matching arc, kill, solar kill, void kill subclass, etc, etc, complete bounties, collect void orbs and any strike. Then you get down to the masterwork. This is, uh, this is going to be, this is going to be interesting. Let's just say that. So to masterwork the solstice armor. Complete a prestige nightfall with a score of 200,000 or better. Complete playlist strikes with clan mates. Complete the dungeon shattered throne in the dreaming city with a fire team of two players or fewer, which should be okay now for most people. Reset season seven valor ranking in the crucible. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be a retroactive step, meaning if you've already reset it before in season seven, then it'll still class as that, or whether you have to reset it once you get to this step. Now I personally am on Heroic 3 on like my fourth reset. So I think I'm gonna hold off the crucible a little bit. Or maybe even just get it up to um, legend and then just reset it once I get to this step. And defeat challenging combatants throughout the system. When you get down to the uh, other rewards part, there's links to the sparrows that was attached to Evil Avante. These are all dead links now. They, they were on the database, but they have been removed. Even this one here that says that it's uh, it's been replaced with this. There's also a section of text that mentions needing the majestic solstice armor set. There's nothing that I've read through so far that mentions majestic. Obviously, masterwork is hunter, but masterwork is the top. But maybe there is another one that is yet to drop. Maybe it's going to be from random packages that you get from Evil Avante. There is some screenshots of emotes as well that will be um, available through TESS at Eververse. And also in the text that has been dear to mind, there is so far three exotic ghosts, two exotic sparrows, one exotic ship, two legendary ghost projections, four rare ghost projections, two transmat effects and six bundles. The bundles are seasonal armor sets and armor glow sets. Also, the two remaining triumphs for the Solstice Seal are obtain the complete Majestic Solstice of Heroes 2019 armor set and masterwork any piece of Majestic Solstice armor. Then it just quickly talks about Solo Week. It's stuff that we already know. You know, Solo subclasses have been refreshed and improved. So hopefully the bottom tree on the, the Hammer's Titan will actually be feasible now. And then also when it gets to the bottom, a bit that had already previously been data mined, but uh, he mentions it again. These are other parts that have been data mined, but he doesn't know what for with the part of a quest or a mission or what. Scattered pieces of a greater hull and rocket launch components. Now, I am of the split camp at the moment where I genuinely hope that this is for Galahorn. The peanut butter galley time. I want this rocket launcher back so much, but you see a lot of people being so negative all over the internet saying that they don't want old exotics back, that they want things back that it feels like they're getting something back that they've already paid for. So which camp do you drop in? Like I say, I am firmly in that I want the Galahorn back. So like I said, this is a very, very, very lengthy post, but I will leave it down below. Once again, shout out to JP Deathblade for going through all this trouble. And that does it for this news video, guys. If you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and maybe subscribe if you see fit. It really does mean the world to me. And as always, Guardians, I've been Mod 566 and I will see you all on the next video.